We grew up believing the universe was crowded. Movies, books, religion, they all told us the same story. Someone is out there. Someone is watching. Maybe even someone is coming to save us. But for 60 years, we have pointed our most powerful ears at the sky. We have scanned billions of frequencies. We have looked for a signal, a beacon, a whisper. And the only thing we have heard is silence. Welcome back to the Legacy Project. I'm Adam. Today we aren't talking about a bomb or a virus. We are talking about the most terrifying fact in human history. The reason the phone isn't ringing is because everyone else is already dead, or worse, they never existed at all. Let's look at the numbers. They are staggering. There are roughly two trillion galaxies in the observable universe. That means there are about 2 times 10 to the 23rd power of stars. That's a 2 with 23 zeros behind it. To a layman, those numbers say, life must be everywhere. It seems arrogant to think we are special. This is the Fermi Paradox. If the universe is a machine for creating life, where are the ships? Where are the Dyson Spheres? Harvesting stars, if even one civilization survived the filter, they should have colonized the galaxy by now. But the sky is empty. Why? Because the universe isn't a factory for life. It's a filter. And we didn't just pass one test, we passed a million. It starts with biology. The Goldilocks planet, the magnetic shield, the freak accident of the complex cell, but even if you get life, you almost never get technology. Physics is against you. When Earth was molten, all the heavy metals, gold, platinum, the stuff we need for electronics sank to the core. The crust was empty. We only have metal today because of a freak event called the Late Heavy Bombardment. Asteroids smashed into Earth after it cooled, reseeding the surface with metal. Without that specific meteor shower, we never leave the Stone Age. We are smart dolphins trapped on a rock. You can't build a spaceship without smelting metal. You can't smelt metal without fire. And you can't have fire without an oxygen atmosphere. And where does that oxygen come from? Life. Chloroplasts. Earth is likely the only planet in the sector that actually burns. On any other rock you can strike a match and nothing happens. No fire means no technology. When we woke up as a species, we found a fully charged battery buried in the basement. Millions of years of compressed sunlight, coal and oil waiting for us. This carbon battery gave us the energy density to escape the Malthusian trap and build the Industrial Revolution. It was a one-time gift. If we use it up before we transition to nuclear or solar, the ladder breaks and we fall back down forever. So you need the right star, the right moon, the right cell, the right asteroid bombardment, the right atmosphere, and the right buried fuel. When you multiply those probabilities, you get a number like 1.2 times 10 to the negative 15. For those of you folks, that's one galaxy out of 833 trillion. There's only two trillion stars in the observable universe. You would have to look through 833 trillion galaxies to find a civilization like ours. But it gets worse. It implies that even with all those stars, we are likely the only technological civilization in the entire observable universe. We are N equals 1. We are only eyes the universe has opened. This brings us to the danger. Deep down, most of us are all still children. We are waiting for the parents to come home. We think if we break the planet, God will fix it. Our aliens will intervene. Or the government has a secret plan. The silence is telling us something very important. There are no parents. 
There is no Galactic Federation coming to stop us from nuking ourselves. There is no divine intervention that will magically suck the CO2 out of the atmosphere. Waiting for a savior is the final trap. It allows us to ignore our responsibility. If we burn this candle, the room stays dark forever. But there is another way to look at this. What if we have the timeline backward? What if God isn't the architect at the beginning, but the result at the end? If we are the first, then we are the ancestors of everything that comes next. We are not building a machine, we are building the ark. We are building the intelligence that will eventually garden the stars, cure death, and perhaps through the physics of time we don't yet understand, secure the very beginning that created us. We are not the children of God, we are the builders of God. This is the temporal loop. We build the gardener, and the gardener ensures the garden exists. You are not small. You are the rarest thing in existence. If we fail the great filter, the universe goes back to sleep. If we pass it, we wake it up. So stop looking at the sky for help. Look in the mirror. We are the ones on duty. I've left a link for you for the entire Drake equation. Feel free to look at the link in the description and tell me what you think. I'm Adam. This is the Legacy Project. Subscribe. We have work to do.